At the age of 26, I had hit a wall. When Hemingway was my age, he was working as a foreign correspondent in Paris. Kerouac was traveling all over the country. Both of them would write their first novel by the time they were 27. I was doing none of these things. I was sitting in a cubicle, clicking through QA reports, trying to figure out why the company CRM software worked in Netscape Navigator 4.4, but not 4.5 or why the VOIP protocol stalled in Windows XP, but not 98. <laughs> Back in 2000, when the company was called WebAssist.com, the whole experience seemed so innovative and cutting edge. There were ping pong tables and beanbag chairs. The hip young CEO would barbecue for us every other Friday, and his little dog, Waffle, the company mascot, <laughs> ran free around the office. I was one of those savvy young professionals you read about in magazines like Fast Company, working in the dot-com world. But in 2001, the bubble burst. They took away the ping pong tables. They took away the beanbag chairs. They took away the Friday afternoon barbecue parties. Waffle was eaten by a coyote. <laughs> And now everything felt so average. <laughs> late night land parties turned into late night work parties. They downgraded the catering from California Pizza Kitchen to Papa John's. And they made me wear a lanyard. <laughs> we had to do work now. And looking through the QA data sheets, I realized I had no interest in the work I was supposed to be doing. Shoulders constantly tensed, feeling like there was something more that I should be doing with my life. Something that involved helicopters and herds of wild animals and, and punching things for some reason. <laughs> but despite my daily searches, I never found any jobs that fit this description on monster.com. I'm just another schlep sitting in a cubicle and my life sucks. But luckily for me, it was close to Christmas, which meant I had a fallback plan. People think carnies run Christmas tree lots? Not true. It's disenchanted office workers. <laughs> Driving home one day, I saw the candy cane striped tent going up and decided it was time to get back to nature. I put in my notice in the cubicle job the very next morning. Then that night, I went to the closet and found the shoebox with the supplies I'd need. Gloves, clippers, X-Acto blade, and tape measure. These are the tools of the Christmas tree trade. <laughs> I had been working tree lots off and on since high school, and I knew exactly what I was getting into. It was revving up the chainsaws and racing the other guys to see who could stand the most trees. It was watching the sun set in the crisp December air. It was smelling like pine all the time and the satisfying swirl of dirt that washed off your body down the drain at the end of the day. I even liked the dirty black boogers you had to shoot out of your nose in the shower each night. <laughs> and it's at this point that I should explain, I didn't just work at whatever tree lot was setting up shop on whatever vacant corner was around. I went straight for the jugular with my Christmas tree career. I worked at the Christmas tree lot in Rancho Santa Fe. <laughs> The customers were people that didn't flinch at paying four to five hundred dollars for a Christmas tree. Sliding a forty dollar tip my way for the delivery was no big deal. And this is where you made the money. Selling the trees, setting up the deliveries, and doing it all fast. Moving timber! <laughs> Sitting around the bonfire after closing, looking at the stars and drinking beers with the other guys. I thought to myself, two weeks ago I was sitting in a cubicle, but this? This is much better. This was the job for me, hawking trees, making cash, following trophy wives in velour jumpsuits past eight-car garages. These people didn't care. They were just throwing money at me. I would think to myself, what if I could deliver Christmas trees all year round? How could I convince the masses that it was important to have a dead tree in their living room at all times? I would have regulars. I would just plan to see them the same time every month. I could make a little extra money by taking the old trees away too. And what about that woman that came by every year saying her husband is out of town and her tree just, you know, fell over? 
She always handpicked one of us to go, one of us guys to go back to her house to get it up straight again. Would she start coming by every month? But I knew that would never happen. And one day soon, the Christmas season will end, and I'll have to go back to some soul-sucking corporate gig and send my, spend my life hunched over in a cubicle. I thought, is this the point in life when people turn to religion, they wait in traffic or in line at the grocery store, eating quiet lunches in the break room, muttering to themselves, this is all part of God's plan. <laughs> it was around this time I decided to go to church and find out. The choir was singing and I thought to myself, yeah, that's probably what happens. And that's probably what I should do too. And up on the big screen, they displayed the lyrics of the song they were singing. I could sing of your love forever. 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 The slide changed, and now it said, I could sing of your love forever. Sing it with me! I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. Some woman began to sing All Holy Night over the repeating chorus. She had the idea, she presented it, to, presented it to the group, and they accepted it as something they would do because it didn't sound bad. And thank God they did this too because there I was at a crucial moment in my life and the whole mass of Christianity appeared to me as artless hacks. I decided no future, 401k be damned, and to hell with the hereafter. I'm gonna concentrate on the here and now. And what am I doing now? I'm selling Christmas trees. If you pulled your SUV up to my tree lot, you would buy a tree. You might wander around with your latte, looking at all the different trees, let your Bijan hop around in the mud. <laughs> but in a couple minutes, I'll come over and I'll have you convinced that what stands before you now is the essence of arboreal perfection. This tree is so full, it makes Manhattan look like a ghost town. <laughs> Pythagoras himself could not have envisioned a more perfect conical shape. <laughs> there are religious sects in China devoted to the worship of this very hue of green. <laughs> the scent of this tree will make your maid stop stealing from you. And the top of this tree is so straight and perfect that when you put your angel up there, it will come to life and bestow a blessing on each and every member of your family, your wife, your kids, Corvette, lawyer, mistress, and stock portfolio. Later this evening, I'll deliver this Christmas tree to your house, and you'll watch me move and realize there's no finer set of DNA than mine to bring this tree into your living room. I'll shake out the needles in the front lawn, take off my shoes before I come in. I'll map out the route I'm gonna take, single-handedly maneuvering this Christmas tree through the door, down the hall, up the stairs, and drop it right in the spot where you laid out the plastic bags in the living room. Never scratching a wall, never knocking over a lamp, never getting a drop of sap on your couch. It was like I was never there. From the minute you bought this tree, I took note of the good side, the side you wanted in front, and I had it all planned out, all to put that tree up so it's straight and perfect because the good side facing out so I can get that wow factor because that's where I make my money. You'll remember last year how your husband clumsily dragged the tree halfway in and couldn't get it up straight in the stand. He had to run down to Home Depot to hire a couple guys to help him take it back outside <laughs> and get it straightened out again. When I deliver your tree, I'll get it up straight and tall the first time. You won't even know what hits you. You'll think to yourself, that was awesome. He is definitely getting a tip. I didn't even step on your dog. <laughs> yeah, it's a fucking Christmas tree, but I'm good at Christmas trees. I'm real good at Christmas trees. That's my skill. That's what I got. The very phallic Nathan Young.